And who is it all about? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Is it really all about Jesus? Yes. So if he hadn't have come, what would we be doing? See, what you told me by showing up today is that you believe that Jesus Christ really exists. What you have said when you come today is that, that you need Jesus Christ. Amen. That you need Him. See, we don't know when that next moment is going to bring something different into our life, do we? And I'm sorry if I scared anyone this morning. I really am. But you know, sometimes it takes it takes fear and it takes and it takes just that surprise to, to make us really understand what we believe. Sometimes it takes the, the understanding of, of something that, that's beyond the natural. Something that's supernatural. Now, I know if you're here this morning, you probably believe, I hope you believe, that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. That, that I preached that a couple of weeks ago, that if he was... You know, that he was conceived with a virgin and, and she was she'd never been with a man. She was she was not perfect, but she was she was not spoiled by a man. And most women think men spoiled for the <laughs> but, but I hope you understand this morning that it isn't just what we believe that matters. I want to take the scripture this morning and help you understand it's not just what we believe <coughs> that matters, it's what we do with what we believe. Amen. That the Bible is very clear that we're supposed to do something with what we believe. So I want to ask you a question, and I want you to I want you to really get this point. Do you believe in the announcement of Jesus Christ as born to Mary? Do you believe in that? Yes. Amen. Now, what are you going to do with that belief? Man, that's what I wanted here, but I wanted everybody to say that. Tell others. Tell others. Because I want you to see in the Scripture this morning what the shepherds believe. And then I want you to see what the shepherds did with the announcement this morning. Because see, you know, most of the time, we as Christians, especially if you've been a Christian a long time, we kind of look at shepherds as an honorable field, don't we? We kind of look at shepherds as being, you know, what? Well, that'd be kind of cool. You know, go, get to go out and fight lions and bears and, and coyotes and, and, and thieves and, and, you know, we think kind of thing. But I want you to stop and think for a second. See, the shepherds wasn't highly thought of. So, Brother, how can you, can you prove that with Scripture? Well, I'll give you a couple of examples that you can understand. It. You know, the Bible is very clear that most people that shepherd, shepherded had to be hired to do it because they weren't willing to put their lives on the line for their sheep, right? And then the Bible also teaches that King David, who was the youngest, scrawniest one out of all of his family, that he was the one that got assigned to take care of the sheep while all the bigger, stronger, more handsome brothers went and did other things. Right? And so when you look at this and when you study out history of it, and you'll find out a little more that the Jewish religious leaders really didn't think a lot of the shepherds. They were kind of like a, a second class citizen, so to speak. Are you with me? But oh my God thought a lot of them. Didn't your God think a lot of them? How many times does he give us examples of shepherds in Scripture? And it's because of the qualities of a shepherd. Not because of their social status, not because of how much money they had, not because of, of the positions that they held in the community, but because of their character. Because of their character is the reason why he thought a lot of them. And so here we see in this scripture this morning that, that he comes through the angel and, and appears to, to, the, to the shepherds while they're out there watching their flock by night. It says in verse 9, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Now I run off from home too quick this morning to do the children's sermon I was going to do. 
Cindy says, Dana, I need some sugar cookies and some and some bags for my for my preschool class. And I and I'm so I, you know, but but I've got this spotlight. And it's like, you know, a hundred thousand aluminum candles. And and so I was gonna use that on the kids this morning and just and just shine the light on them. Because that's what happened to, to the shepherds here. The light got shined on. Because, you know, if you've ever been blinded by the light, you know what I'm saying? Now, it's not a song either I'm talking about. <laughs> but if you've ever been blinded by the light and you can't see nothing. You know, I'm getting to the age now that when somebody bright lights me with cars and it's dark and raining, I'm liable to hit things. Because it's just like, oh, that's all I see. But, but these shepherds are out in the middle of the clock. Out away from the town. Now you got to remember this because we live in such a modern society. We forget this. There are no cars. There are no major flashlights like that. There, there, there's not even no lampstands or anything out there in, 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 in the field with them. They're out there in the dark. Are y'all with me? And sometimes it's really dark, isn't it? That's what I love living about where we live now. I can go out in the back patio and look up at the stars because it's dark and just see God's creation. But, but all of a sudden, this bright light shines down on them. Now, in our day and time, we think the aliens had landed. <laughs> we think they're coming to, to beam me up and take me off to some foreign you know, globe that doesn't exist and, 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 and suck all my brains out because they need that many brains, right? And, well, some of y'all are starting to get it. But, but we, get this, we get this ET experience when we think about the bright light, right? Coming down and everything. But they didn't have ET back then. They hadn't watched the movie. They didn't understand that. And so all of a sudden, this bright light shows up. And this bright light shows up, and it scares the daylights out of them. Literally. Yeah. They didn't know what to do. You know, many times in Scripture, I see where angels show up, and people, it says people are like dead men. They don't say nothing. They don't do nothing. They're just afraid. You know, my kids are always so perfect. Do you notice how still they sit after I... Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And that's what happened to the shepherds that night. It says, it says, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. I want you to know if I scared you this morning, fear not, because I bring you good tidings of great joy this morning. I'm here to tell you about Jesus. I'm here to tell you what Jesus has done for you. I'm here to tell you you can have Jesus because he, He's alive. Amen. Right? And so, so the shepherds get the, they get the good news. They get the good news, of, the good tidings of great joy. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I like being joyful. Anybody here like being joyful? Amen. All right, put your hands down. How many of y'all would rather be an old sour face? Praise God, only one person raised their hand. We'll have to talk to them after the church. <laughs> See, we want to be people that want to be joyful, shouldn't we? And he's telling the shepherds, he says, you don't have to be afraid. Don't be scared. And, and he's telling us this morning, folks, whatever you're going through, you don't have to be afraid. Right. You don't have to be scared. Because Jesus Christ came. Right. You know, you could be facing death this morning and you don't have to be afraid. Right. And you don't have to be scared right. if you got Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? right? We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be scared this morning. And that's what he's telling, telling the, the shepherds here as he, as he comes. He says, he says, and this, this one that's coming, he's come to all people. And, and I think when he says that, he doesn't mean that everybody's going to get saved. I think he means is he came that all classes of people can be saved. Amen. That God doesn't have, he's not a respecter of persons. Right. He doesn't have his favorites. <coughs> he loves us. Yeah. And there's many different kinds of people who's going to come to know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. 
He says, For unto you this day in the city of David a Savior. And he's talking about his born. For unto you this day a Savior is born, which is Christ the Lord. See, my Jesus is Lord. Is your Jesus Lord? Amen. My Bible says He's Lord of Lords and King of Kings, right? Amen. And so my Jesus is Lord. And He says, He's telling these, these shepherds, He says, Your Savior just was born today. Your Savior was born today. Now, if we, if we go back and we really look at this big picture, it's kind of like Christmas. Do y'all look forward to December 25th? Yes. Amen. I do. And I'm looking forward to it even more when I get grandkids. <laughs> I keep telling them they ain't listening to <laughs> no. but, but, but I love Christmas. Don't you love Christmas? Yeah. And I don't love Christmas because of what I want. I love Christmas because of the joy I see on people's faces. I love Christmas because of watching little kids open up presents. Uh, we got all kinds of videos of, of our kids opening up their presents and everything. I love every second of that as, as far as Christmas goes. Because I love the joy of it. And let me tell you something. When, when they come and they told the shepherds that the one who's been prophesied to be born was born this morning, that was a joyous event. <laughs> That was something to be excited about. That was something to take hold of. And, and so the shepherds, they, they, they caught it. But I got a question I want to ask you because I think this question was really asked of the shepherds without being asked. I think it really was. Are we living the announcement? And you say, where, where they, why do you say something like that? He goes in verse 12, he says, And this shall be a sign unto you. This shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Now, did he tell them, go find the baby? No. no. And see, so many times I think in our world we get messed up. We think God's going to give us every exact detail of how everything has to be done so that we can know that we're in the will of God. I ain't finding God giving every exact detail anywhere in Scripture. But He tells you all you need to know. And He told them, he told them what they needed to know. He, he, he told them that this is going to be the sign. And this swat, the sign is this, this baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Now think for a minute. Why did he say swaddling clothes? Why did he tell them it was in a manger? See, these shepherds aren't well to do people. These shepherds were thought less of by most of society then. They wasn't a good, strong Christian society like we are. We think shepherds are a great thing. But see, my Jesus didn't just come for the wealthy, did he? No. My Jesus didn't just come for the prominent, did he? No. My Jesus came for all Amen. types of people. All kinds of people. And so we see that announcement. And then it says that and suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, I mean, when Rachel finished singing, she did such a good job this morning, Rachel. Amen. When Rachel finished singing this morning, what would y'all have all thought if all of a sudden the windows of heaven opened up and all of a sudden we heard, Hallelujah! 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 <laughs> y'all thought, Brother Daniel, about your name. If, if heaven would have started singing hallelujah behind her this morning, we would have all started shouting, or falling, or scared, or done something, wouldn't we? That's what happened to the shepherds. After the angel finished his announcement, all of a sudden, heavens opened up, and they started singing. They started the multitude of heavenly praise. Praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. Now let me tell you what they're, what, what they're praising here because I think sometimes we forget this. And what they're teaching the shepherds here, hopefully what I'm sharing with you this morning. You know, we have a purpose in us. You know, that they say that every person born has a desire to worship someone. Because God instilled that desire in us. Now we know there's lots of false things we worship, right? But we know Jesus Christ is not a false thing, don't we? We know He's the real thing, right? He's better than Coca-Cola. He's the real thing. And, 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 and we should worship Him. And so He says we should be praising and singing glory to God in the highest. Glory to God highest, in His highest of who He is, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We should be, we should be praising Him in, in, for, for His supernatural abilities. We should be praising Him for being able to do the impossible. Isn't it kind of cool that God can make the sun stand still for almost a day? Isn't it kind of cool that one place in Scripture God even had the sun go back? <laughs> Isn't it kind of cool that He can make the axe head flow? Isn't it kind of, are you getting the point here? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it kind of cool that our God, and He should be praised, and we should give Him glory in the highest, because who else can do that stuff? Nobody. 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 But then looking at the rest of that, it says, and on earth, peace. You know one of the biggest things missing in our society is peace. Mm -hmm. right. Y'all know that, don't you? Yeah. Matter of fact, let me just go a little further than that. One of the biggest things missing in a lot of the lives inside of here this morning is peace. Because we've let everything else, Brother Dane included at times, get hold of us to where it takes our peace away. Let's see if y'all tell the truth this morning. How many of y'all have ever lost your peace for a while? We did. And see, and we're supposed to have that peace. Because Jesus came so that we could have peace. peace. Now, I didn't say that there wouldn't be wars. I said that we could have peace. Not that everything would be peaceful. See, we've got to learn how to have peace even in unpeaceful situations. And we can give Him glory because He brought that to us. Jesus Christ brought us the truth of a Savior who took away our sins who rose from the grave, who is sitting at the right hand of the Father today interceding for us, and we can have peace in that, right? Amen. Oh, we can have peace. It says in goodwill toward me. Well, I don't like that old rascal over here. He don't treat me right. I don't think that's what he said here, was it? Like, Lord, I don't know what they're going through, but bless them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Let them feel your joy and your peace, Lord. That's the kind of people we ought to be. It doesn't say roll, lay down and let them roll over you with a steamroller. <laughs> but it does say have goodwill toward me. Yeah. Right? Don't you think we should want good for everybody? Yes. Yeah. I think we should want good for everybody. And that's what they, they said when they was praising the Lord and why we could praise the Lord. And then all of a sudden the angels, this, the angel disappeared and the angelic choir disappeared and the praise all disappeared. And so get this picture. So now here's these shepherds back out in the dark again. Now here comes this important question. What you going to do? Because see, the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, God is still working supernaturally in our lives today. God is still at work. The Bible says that God is always working around us. That the truth of the matter is, we still should be learning things and knowing things about Him and, and, and growing in our relationship with Him and making decisions about what we really believe. So those shepherds, 
even though they were not told to go to the manger, after everything disappeared and it got back to dark again, and remember shepherds, how faithful they are? What were they watching? Sheep. Now, once you get this, probably even the sheep that was going to be used to make the sacrifices for God. Possibly. And all of a sudden, after this great experience, it says. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even into Bethlehem to see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Now let me put that in plain English for you. Hey Joe, don't you think we ought to be a part of what God's doing? Well sure Tom, I should be a part, we should be a part of what... What, what God's doing. Now their name's probably wasn't Joe and Tom. <laughs> it was probably a biblical name. But they're talking to one another and saying, well, what do you think we ought to do with this? Just like I'm talking to you this morning and saying, what do you think you ought to do with this? What do you think we ought to do with the fact that Jesus Christ was came, born of a virgin, died on the cross, paid our sin debt, and is at the right hand of the Father today and saved us? What should we do with that? And, and, and that's what the, these, these shepherds are talking about. What should we do with this? And it says, And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. You know what that just said? They got off their backside and went and did something. Now I know they could have been Southern Baptists. Because if they'd been Southern Baptists, they'd had to say, let's get a committee together. <laughs> or, or we need to have a special call prayer meeting because we just didn't have one. So that we can determine what we want to do. No. We listen to Him. Right? And, and, and so they didn't do those things. They got up with haste. Do y'all know what that means? That's, that's an old time word that we don't use today. We say quickly. Let's go. Spontaneously. You know, I'm a planner. And, and sometimes Cindy tells me things that you... You just need to be more spontaneous. You just plan way too much stuff out. <laughs> they didn't plan out nothing. They left their sheep. Listen, they didn't call their neighbors and say, can you wash the sheep for a while? They didn't plug in the electric fence and put around them. Are you, are you understanding the point? You know there was no phones and there was no electric fence, right? <laughs> they got up and they went and found Jesus lying in a manger right there where the angel said He would be. Amen? Amen. And when they had seen it, they made known of Raw the same which was told them concerning this child. And then they went back and told everybody. They went back and told everybody. You know, at the Christmas season, this is one of the most beautiful stories you hear in churches all the time, right? What if they had never went and told anybody? You know, they went and told people what they believe about Jesus. Choir before you get to get the notion? Or 
or is God's word not clear enough when he give you the, the great commission in five different books of the Bible? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Are you with me? And see, the truth of it is, folks, is because we don't wonder if Jesus was born, do we? We all know Jesus was born, don't we? Amen. We all know He was born in a feeding trough, don't we? Amen. We all know that He was born wrapped in swaddling clothes, which means they didn't have no money. Amen. We all know that, don't we? And we all know that He lived His life on this earth and died on that cross for our sins and paid that sin debt and resurrected from the dead. And He's alive at the right hand of the Father today, don't we? And we all know He's coming back someday, don't we? He's coming back. And we love all those things, don't we? Somehow as we live our life down here, we want to forget one thing. <coughs> we want to forget the scripture that teaches us that every knee shall bow. Amen. We want to forget the scripture that teaches us that we will stand before Jesus Christ on the judgment seat someday. The Christians will see him at judgment seat of Christ. Lost people see him at the great white throne of judgment. Those will be cast into an ever lake and burning lake of fire. But we're going to stand before him someday. And you know what? I've got this figured out. We don't get to talk. He does. Who knows everything? He does. Do we know everything? No. Do we make mistakes? Yes. Do we perceive things that aren't true? Yes. Yeah. We get everything in our own perspective sometimes that really isn't right, isn't it? Well, we don't talk in that day. It'll either be, well done, my fine faithful servant. Or why didn't you go do what I told you to? And then you'll reward you accordingly. See, when we look at the scripture, when we look at the scripture, we see that they went and told people of wrong. So they didn't go just back to the sheep. They went and told people everywhere they went. Now I'm not saying they quit shepherding. But I'm saying, as they moved around, they told everybody they come in contact with them about what they believe about Jesus. Right? And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. You know, I, I want you to understand this. If I told you 2 plus 2 is 5, you think I'm stupid at first. But at times, there'll come a point where if I keep telling you every day, two plus two is five, two plus two is five, two plus two is five, two plus two is five that somebody's going to start believing me. I think about it with me here. Because I have people come to me all the time and say, Brother Dan, is this really going to happen? And I say, yep. So and so said it wasn't going to happen. Why'd you believe them for it? Because they told me. Are you with me? Yeah. And what they did is they just kept telling everybody they believed Jesus Christ was born. Jesus Christ was born. Jesus Christ was born. The Savior of the world has been born. The Savior of the world has been born. And that's what we got to tell people today. The Savior of the world was born. He lived on this world 33 how many every years and, and he died on the old rugged cross and paid my sin debt and your sin debt and he went to that tomb and he resurrected from the grave and he sits at the right hand of the Father today and he's coming back for his children someday. Amen. And we just got to keep telling them that and keep telling them that and keep telling them that. Because there's lots of people out there telling them other stuff. 
there's people telling them, everybody's going to heaven, why are you worried about it, Lord? But that's not what the Bible teaches. That's right. That's right. There's lots of people say, well, you believe in your God, I believe in my God, and we'll all go to the same place. No. No. Wrong answer. So people are saying these things, and I could go, I'm you know, not against people, I'm for people. I want you to understand, you can't listen to stuff that's wrong, but we got to share what we know to be right, so that people can listen to it, people can hear it, people can receive it. You know, I only want one thing for Christmas. <coughs> There's a person I'm praying for for God to save. That's the greatest Christmas present I can get this year if God saves that person. And I'm praying for that person. I'm praying that God will save them. I hope it happens Christmas morning. Amen. I hope they get saved on Christmas morning. Well, let's not even wait to Christmas. We go ahead and do it today. You want to? No. I want that person to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Why? They're not my family member. Why? Because once that person gets saved, there'll be somebody else I'll want to see. And because when that person gets saved, there'll be somebody else I'll want to see get saved. And because when that person gets saved, there'll be somebody else I'll want to see see you say. Why? Because that's why Jesus came for it. <coughs> right? That's why he came for it. And all they that heard it wondered at those things that were told by the shepherd. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them <coughs> in her heart. Can you imagine being the mother of Jesus. You can't imagine it. Can you? Can you imagine it? And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to do. See, here's how supernatural my God is. Everything was exactly like the angel told the shepherds it would be. Here's the point I want to make to us this morning. If everything was exactly like the angels told the shepherds that it would be, is there any doubt in your mind that everything he says in the scripture is not going to come true? <clears throat> is there any doubt? No. There isn't, is there? No. And so if there isn't any doubt that everything in the scripture is going to come true, then I got I got two questions for the people here this morning. If you're lost, why would you want to be that way? If everything in here is going to come true. And, and my second question is if you're saved, why are we busy telling more people about Jesus? Because everything in here is going to come true. See, I know the answer. I know the answer in most situations. Because it's not what we want yet. And I'm here to tell you this morning. That's why there's less peace. It's because we're still interested in what we want. Instead of being interested in what he wants. struggle with the same thing. Do you struggle with that sometimes? Yeah. Want what you want to do, what you want? Yeah. <clears throat> but I hope someday I can get a handle on this. They want just what he wants all the time. Because it's what's best, isn't it? It's kind of gracious heaven. <coughs> Father God, we are trusting you. We believe in you, Jesus. 
we know that what you want is much more important than anything we ever want. And we know, even through our Sunday school lesson this morning, Father God, and Joshua, that we, <coughs> we do the right thing and you'll take care of us. God, help us to always have a heart to want to do the right thing. The right thing is what you want. The right thing is what you want. The right thing is what you want. Not what I want. Not what anybody else wants. What you want. God, may we be used to your glory. May we praise your name as the shepherds did. May we tell everyone about Jesus. May we live our lives knowing the truth is Jesus Christ in everything that you say. Touch every heart here this morning, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, we